I think growing up, you know, movie cars for me are a way of escaping reality. You know, I'm sure I've got ADHD because I'm an absolute lunatic and I can't just concentrate on one thing. I have to buy a little bit of everything, you know. But for me, the movie cars are a way of me reliving moments with my dad, with my family, with my kids. You know, you go to a movie and you look in your kids' eyes as they're getting excited about a movie, getting excited and walking away with that buzz. That feeling of sitting next to them when they felt that feeling is second to none. And there's a film, Too Fast, Too Furious, is one of my favorite films of all time. And it was the first film I ever went to with my dad that was a 15 and I was 15. And you know, we're at the movies and the opening scene of the universal wheel that turns into the, the truck and then it goes down the road and Joe Budden's Pump It Up comes on. That that song for me and that movie is something I'll never forget. And you know, being there with my dad and him taking me, some people in life don't get to meet their dad, some people don't have great relationships with their dad. To have this connection in the car world with him and watching, you know, Dukes of Hazard and all these kind of night riders and stuff, those little details make me feel nostalgic because if I could ever be as good a dad to my kids as my dad was to me, then I know I've made it in life. So maybe these cars are me trying to recapture that and try and, you know, maybe feel my kids' brains with you know, some memories. If I die tomorrow, at least they had some fun and let's just hope I'm gonna be as good as the next guy that comes along, eh? So I've made more money in movie cars and owning the only guy in the world to own two like and hypersports than anything else in the world. You know, I buy and sell run of the mill cars every day and you can earn a couple of grand out of each one of them. And you know, the figures do outweigh them, but the single amount of money you can make out of a fake supercar or a fake movie car is phenomenal. All I need is that like-minded car lover out there and, you know, money in the bank. So being the movie car nut that I am, I have basically ticked lots of boxes. But when someone tells you on a Facebook Marketplace message that he knows where there is a real Harry Potter car sitting in the back of a field, it gets your senses a little bit heightened. So I was like, do you know what? There's only one thing I can do. I found a reference point in the back of the picture. There's no point in me messaging because there's hundreds of comments. I've just got to drive there and see if the car's still there. So I jump in the car, it's like two o'clock in the afternoon, four hour drive up north, and the car is at the back of a lady's house. I knock the door and she answers the door and she's like, how can I help you? Through the letterbox. Obviously she doesn't want to be, actually speak to someone. And I said, oh, I've seen your car down the bottom of the garden. I'm a massive fan, you know. Oh, well, the car's not for sale, slam the door. I was like, okay, cool. So give it another two minutes. She's like, look, I'm really, really sorry. My kids absolutely love the franchise, love Daniel Radcliffe, you know, love Rupert Grint. Like it is the most amazing series of, of our lifetime in some ways, you know, or fictional series, should we say. And I was like, look, can I at least go check it out and take some photos of my kids? As soon as I mentioned there was a family aspect, you know, the door open, we had a bit of a chat and she said, oh, go on then, go and have a look at it. So this is the story, and this is a story, but it got me hooked, so you never know. But basically, she said, I lived in Northern Ireland, and a lot of the sets were built in Northern Ireland for the Harry Potter franchise. This car was used for some B-roll shots and was also used for interior shots. So some items aren't perfect, but there are details that are very, very similar. And I was like, right. She said, well, I bought this car off the set builder at Warner Brothers, and basically when these cars were built back in the day, they weren't worth like 100, 150 pounds. They were, they were rollers, they were scrap cars, they were old Ford Anglias that no one really cared about. And and one of them got stolen. So obviously one was stolen off the set and was found in a forest, which was a massive news story. But she bought this car off the set builder of Harry Potter. And to me, that is the holy grail. This could be a real 100% authentic Harry Potter driven Ford Anglia. Like it doesn't get cooler than that. And there's the possibility that it might just fly. Well, it probably will do if it actually turns out to be real. I might actually make some money. So I did look into you know, back in the movie and the colors and the details of the car and a lot of the details are very accurate. There are a few details out there that people will tell me aren't right, that the front lower grille has been replaced at some point and has got indicators in different places. But what they do over the years, everyone likes to facelift a car. So you have like an earlier one and then a later one. And back in the day or even, you know, recently, the ones with a different grille are more favorable, you know, worth a lot more money. So the grille has been changed. So there is that element that, that could have been changed and it would be accurate. There's a little dial, I believe, in the middle of the dashboard that's also not there, but I believe the seats are the right color, the paintwork's the right color, there are details where there are screw marks where you can imagine a camera would have been mounted, but it's a very cool car, like it, and it is very clean. Got quite a 
bit of rust here and there like you'd expect any car from the 70s but you know really really cool car we agreed on some figures and she said she wanted eight thousand pound around twelve thousand dollars and i was quite happy with that uh, she only wanted cash that was the catch i want cash 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 so i drove four hours back and on the way home i got the phone call that we all expect that's why you always should turn up with somewhere with cash in hand because these things change and people's sentiments get in the way and they decide not to sell it so on the drive back, she's like, I'm really sorry, Sam. I know your kids want it and you love it and you're excited, but I'm just gonna keep the car. I did the same thing I always do. Give it six months. How's your family? How's the car? Has it moved? And, and you know, she said, oh, it's moved into a barn. So it's gone into a corrugated barn and it's dry. It's dry stored, it's safe. I'm like, brilliant, okay. But it's still not for sale, I'm gonna keep it. And then I got a phone call out of the blue. So I just bought the GT40 for far too much money for an absolute rolling nightmare. And I was low on cash. And she phoned me, she said, Sam, I'm in the Stuck. I really could do with some money here. I'm like, right. So is the car for sale. And I like, my wife is sat there eating dinner. The kids are eating dinner. And I'm on the phone with my dinner and I stand up and the plate goes on the floor. Like I throw it everywhere because I'm so excited that my opportunity has finally come to buy the Harry Potter car. I dumped my food. I got my wife to clean up the food. Thank you very much, lovely lady. But then what I did was I jumped in the recovery truck and I drove straight there to get it. You, I can't allow her you know, brain to get in the way of finally selling me this car. And I drove there and I said, I'm really, really sorry but I've only got 7,000 pounds, that's, that's all I've got because I've just bought this car and you know my car dealership isn't selling cars. So I drove there and I gave her seven grand, she's like, that's fine. So I bought the car and on the way back, I was just, my heart was pounding out my chest. How can I find out if this is real? How can I find, authenticate it? The last one of these sold was half a million dollars. I know this was chump change, but I know that if the car doesn't turn out to be real, it would be a really cool story on VimWiki. If not, even these cars standard as a rolling pretty car, I get my money back. There's no real risk. But you know what, Rupert Grint, if you're out there, and you really want to wizard this up and make it a magical story for me, give me a call and let's see if we can authenticate this. So if you think about it, barn finds are these cars that were neglected over the years. Our granddads and our dads got a bit bored of, they broke down, they got stored away and they got, you know, forgotten about. You've got to imagine that every car is loved now with the electric EVs coming along. You know, these petrol engines, internal combustion engines are kind of forgotten about. If you think about it, these unloved movie cars are the barn finds of today. I can imagine there's some hidden out there which I've just got to get my hands on. Caramel is the perfect hack for any private party vehicle transaction. They'll make your deal run faster, safer, and smoother than you ever thought possible. And Caramel works with any buying or selling platform because they step in after you've made a deal to take care of all of the paperwork for the transaction and also all the forms and paperwork that you need with any DMV in any state to get your car registered and titled. They protect both buyer and seller by safely verifying identities, and they connect to both bank accounts so that you don't have to worry about wire transfers, certifying checks, and all the other risks that usually go with a private party transaction. And for a limited time, Caramel is free to both buyers and sellers. Of course, you can add things like shipping and protection packages and things like that, but all of that is optional. So check them out now at drivecaramel.com or at the link in the description below.